comparisons, comparisons, comparisons. I want to talk why all the camera versus another camera or a medium format sensor versus a full frame sensor versus a APS-C sensor versus a micro four sensor, that lens versus that lens are all, all wrong. And believe me, they are wrong. And I will tell you why in this video. There, my name is Tudor Matescu and welcome to my channel. On my channel I talk about photography gear, tips and tricks, so please subscribe to my channel for more related content like this. So let me tell you why from my vast experience of using different camera brands and different camera sensors and all kinds of lenses, why all the test labs shot that you see, all the comparison videos that you see, all the camera A versus camera B are all wrong. So when I started photography, I was watching myself this kind of videos and reading this kind of articles. I was pixel peeping, I was looking at the Dove, I was looking at the Bokeh, I was looking at the micro contrast, I was reading all kinds of uh, ideas how you can obtain a shallower of depth of field on a micro four thirds camera. Here is my micro four thirds camera, Lumix JX9, amazing, extraordinary camera. And here, as you can see, I have Fujifilm X4 and uh, in the other hand, uh, you saw a Fujifilm X100V. I also have Sony A7R3. So I really used a lot of camera systems. I was also used Nikon, Olympus, Micro Four Thirds, and so on. So I really know something about these systems. And I've watched a lot, a lot of videos about different comparison. This lens versus that lens. This Micro Four System versus a full frame system. And all the equivalency talk. So let me tell you why all these videos are very, very wrong. But before telling you that, the problem is that when I saw these videos, I've tried to replicate. When I had a Micro Four Thirds schema, I've tried to replicate the full frame look, the full frame depth of field and so on. So my mindset was all wrong. I didn't understand the system. So this is the first point. Why this comparison are all wrong? You must understand the system that you are using it. You must understand that system for what it is and what it are the system strong points and what are the system weaker points in some situations. And also these situations depends on your interest, on your intention. Good photography, it is photography with intention. The photographer wanted to obtain that result. This is good photography. And the photographer choose the right camera, the right system, the right lens to get that result. So we are getting to the second point why all this comparisons and all these camera A versus camera B, sensor A versus sensor B are wrong, are totally wrong. It's not about the sensor side and it is not about the results. It's about how you interact with this system. If you have a system that will offer you a lens that you can shoot it at f1.2, a full frame system, Sony, Canon and so on, you will use that 50 millimeters at f1.2. So when you compare different lenses or different sensors, you must compare it by thinking how a real photographer will use that camera in a real photographical situation for a wedding, let's say. You don't buy a $20,000 50 millimeters f1.2 lens to use it at f4 or at f3.5. Also, you don't buy a medium format camera with 100 megapixels to use it without a tripod to do weddings. Also, you don't take a micro four cell system to do weddings without light or uh, to do weddings with an f3.5 uh, lens and so on. So you must, and the third point is that when you are comparing different cameras, 
you must think about that cameras on how you use that cameras on your daily use. Because I was passionate about camera comparisons and results, I myself take my, all my three main system, Sony full frame, Lumix GX9 Micro Forcer and Fujifilm APS-C and decided to make a comparison to see what results I get for a 50mm equivalent lens when I go out shooting on the streets. I hope to find my pictures and I've rolled that pictures and I'm rolling that pictures from that test that I've made it uh, two, two years ago. And uh, I will not tell you with what cameras the pictures was made. Just to show you that, that I've always obtained almost the same results. So when comparing in a controlled environment, in a controlled scene, this system, also when comparing this system in street photography, where you say, no, I don't have a controlled environment, but it is a controlled environment, it is a controlled scene. You go out with all the three systems and you take the same shot. It is a controlled environment. In reality, when I use just one camera from one system, I use differently that camera. See my XF10 versus XC4 video. The camera determines how I interact with my subject or the environment, I mean. So, this is a huge, huge deal. In a one way, I interact with a camera that I know it has good IBIS, like JX9, I can shoot it at 1 over 60 and do all kinds of fast moves. And in another way, I use a Sony full frame camera or a Fujifilm camera APS-C without IBIS on it. And so on. All kinds of ergonomics decisions that the camera has are influencing my photography. So in real world, I use this system differently. I've also made all kinds of tests with super zooms and with super lenses to see uh, how they compare. But when I was looking at the comparison shots, the differences weren't there. I see 10% difference uh, when I pixel peep. So, we have a problem here. This means these kinds of tests aren't showing us nothing about the real results of a camera, the real world results of the camera. So, in conclusion, in my point of view, to get real results, to get real comparison, you must take a system, just one system, use it for one month, get the feeling of that system, take another equivalent system, use that system for another month, and then compare the shots. Then compare what you've got in different situations. We all talk about how we can obtain a good depth of field using a micro forces camera on a Fujifilm camera with an f1.4 aperture by uh, getting close and so on. Yes, you can do that. But in the real world, I got more good pictures with a thinner depth of field using a full frame camera. Of course, I don't take that full camera every day, every week, like I am able to take a Lumix GX9 camera or a Fujifilm camera. So, again, you must take some shots over a period of a month at least, compare the shots and see what system it's offering you the best of uh, what you feel that you like. Maybe Fujifilm will offer you that, maybe Sony will offer you that, or maybe a Lumix GX9. Of course, in my point of view, Fujifilm is right in the middle. So, with a Fujifilm camera, you'll get something between full frame and something between micro four thirds. But again, it depends on the lenses. On uh, Olympus micro four thirds body, I have now a very small 40 mm lens at f1.4 that it is offering the chance to get very close and to get a nicer, very good looking bokeh. Also, it has a very good micro contrast. I don't have that lens on other systems. Also, the Micro Four Thirds sensor, it is taller than the Four or Third. It is a more squared 
looking sense i will get more vertical so there are some differences there it depends on you what you like and uh, what you want to obtain there are all kinds of disadvantages and advantages depending on the systems and depending on the lens so if you want to make a real comparison you really need to take one camera system with one lens and another camera system with another lens use that systems one month a system one month the other system and then decide so these are my conclusions if you really want to know a system better try to test that system and see if uh, the results that you get from that system and from that lens are something that will satisfy your needs it really it, in the end it is about your needs and your and about your own experience with that system it's not about comparisons the comparisons are all wrong they will not tell you anything important they will not tell you anything important also uh, we can discuss in another video why and how should the lens be tested and stop looking at all that charts with corner sharpness and center sharpness they are uh, the word it's a 3d word we must look at real pictures to get and to understand the results of a lens thank you for watching this video tell me what you think please subscribe to my video and also be sure to check uh, my blog post and my site for more content like this and please uh, hit the like button hit the notification bell and share my videos with your friends this will help me a lot thank you very much